President Truman created the super-secret National Security Agency by secret executive order on November 4th, 1952, and until recent years, there wasn't one in 50,000 people in the United States who even knew it existed. Its primary purpose was to decipher the alien communications and language and establish a dialogue with the aliens. This most urgent task was a continuation of the earlier effort and was codenamed Sigma. The secondary purpose of the NSA was to monitor all communications and emissions from any and all devices worldwide for the purpose of gathering intelligence, both human and alien, and to contain the secret of the alien presence. Project Sigma, ladies and gentlemen, was extremely successful. The NSA also maintains communications with the Luna base and other secret space programs. By executive order, the NSA is exempt from all laws which do not specifically name the NSA in the text of the law as being subject to that law. How many of you know what that means? That means we have a completely lawless organization running around the country doing whatever they want to do, answering to no one, and under no law which does not name the National Security Agency in the text of that law as specifically being subject to that law by executive order of the President of the United States. That means that if the agency is not spelled out in the text of any and every law passed by the Congress, it is not subject to that or those laws. The NSA now performs many other duties and in fact is the premier agency within the intelligence community. Today the NSA receives 75% of the monies allotted to the intelligence community. And the old sayings, ladies and gentlemen, where the money goes, therein the power resides, is absolutely true. The DCI today is mainly a figurehead. He is in charge of the CIA. The CIA does have many functions which are useful to this country and some which are deadly to it. agency's efforts centered around Cold War tactics. M. K. Ultra was an umbrella project that dealt with mind control. These horrible projects went on for years. They used such methods as drugs, radiation, microwaves, based control and severe psychological abuse. 
These barbaric practices were deemed to be illegal and immoral when finally looked at by the United States Senate. I'm going to start. My name is Valerie Wolf. In listening to the testimony today, it all sounds really familiar. I am here to talk about a possible link between radiation and mind control experimentation that began in the late 1940s. The main reason that mind control research is being mentioned is because people are alleging that they were exposed as children to mind control, radiation, drugs, and chemical experimentation, which were administered by the same doctors who are known to have been involved in conducting both radiation and mind control research. I'm Christy Nicola, born July of 1962. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. Dr. Green Baum, also known as Dr. L. Wilson Green, was a Jewish doctor who the Nazis coerced to participate in evil experiments in Auschwitz concentration camp. This individual, whose code name is Dr. Green, arrived to the United States after World War II and began experiments on adults and children for the military and for the CIA. The military and the CIA fostered the sadistic nature of Nazi methodology and began numerous programs of their own. The first CIA program was known as MK Alpha. The M and the K is an abbreviation for the German words. Mind control. By 1953, the CIA, US Navy, and the US Army Chemical Corps were conducting their own narco-hypnosis programs on unwilling victims, such as prisoners. Mental patients. Foreigners, ethnic minority, and sexual differentiate. According to MK Ultra documents and sources, the methodology of mind control works best when severe trauma is administered by the age of three years old. Severe trauma, such as rape, applied at the age of three, will cause the personality to split or disassociate in an attempt to shield the mind from frightful memories or events too painful to endure. A few years later, the child victim's IQ tests and personality tests are evaluated to determine whether the child may be possibly trained in assassination sexual blackmail, drug courier activity, or other roles. The development of different elements of mind control are intertwined with biological and chemical weapons development, radiation testing, and the making of Manchurian candidates. The DCI, of course, is in charge of that agency. But he is not, as everyone thinks, the head of the intelligence community. That position really and truthfully lies with the director of the National Security Agency.